Hello and welcome back. As you may be able to see from all the boxes behind me, Dylan and I are getting ready to move soon. Uh, but I just finished a book and I wanted to share my review on it. So the book that I read was Sue Monk's Kid, Sue Monk Kids, goodness, uh, the book of longings. And what it is about is the fictional wife of Jesus. So I thought this was a really daring plot or topic to take on the challenge of writing. And I started it with the intention that if things got a little too weird, just because it is from the perspective of his wife, um, but that if things got too weird because I am a religious person, I believe in Jesus Christ, I follow him, I try and live my life after him, that I wouldn't finish it. So I do have to say like it never got to that point that I felt like, oh, I, I really shouldn't read this because you know it's being a little sacrilegious or anything. So I, I do have to say, you know, Sue Monk Kid, she, she was careful in that regard. However, that's probably, other than Sue Monk Kid writes beautifully, her figurative language is original and beautiful. I love reading her sentences. Aside from that, that's probably the last good thing I have to say about this book. I was really, really disappointed. I only finished it because I have a goal of reading a certain amount of books this year and I was already pretty much through it and didn't want to abandon something I'd put, in, put so much time into. So the reason is one, striking inaccuracies. Just you'd think if you had researched anything about Christ's like timeline in his life or his familial background that you would recognize these things. And then also that it just completely cower, what, cowered from the actual task of writing about how Christ's wife, again, fictional if he had one, how she would have felt, reacted, what she may have experienced as life was happening. And in fact, I wrote a review, so I'm gonna be kind of going off of that, of this book. Okay, so as I say, however, for a book that was well-researched, in the back she's got an afterword and she said, I researched this a lot. I was disgruntled and shocked by some of the blatant, in blatant inaccuracies. And by the way, I welcome correction or conversation if I am wrong in any of these things. I am in no way a expert on the Bible or like a historian of this time period of Christ's life, but I have studied and been taught the New Testament my whole life. So I do think I have like a small understanding of just some of the basic things um, and basic facts. Unless I read it incorrectly, she implies that Christ died at the age of 30, which he didn't. He died at the age of 33. And then in the book, it talks about John the Baptist. And he is completely treated as a stranger by Jesus and everyone in his family, which that was like the first thing in the book that really just made me scoff at it. Uh, Christ and John the Baptist were cousins. His mother, Mary, knew John's mother, Elizabeth, well. And I find it really hard to believe, as it was implied in this book, that they were complete strangers, had no understanding of who each other were, or that Mary, his mother, had no understanding of who John the Baptist was. Like, there would have to be a moment where they realize, oh, like, you're my cousin. But no, it never touches on that. Oh, and this is something that I have to say, I didn't come up with myself, but a lot of other people have pointed out when I was reading through other people's reactions to this book. Even just the name Jesus itself, 
is the Greek version of his name. So she was wanting to be as accurate to the area and time period as she says she was trying to be. He shouldn't have been being referred to as Jesus. Um, it would have been, and I may be saying this wrong, but it would have been something along the lines of Yahweh, Yahai, a Jehovah version of the name. Uh, let's see. Furthermore, it was never blatantly said. Okay, so this is on to the second point. It was never blatantly said, but I had this overwhelming sense throughout the book that Anna, that's the name of the character who's supposed to be the wife of Jesus, the fictional wife of Jesus. I had this sense throughout the entire thing that she herself did not believe in his divinity. And I realized that this is a book written about the human Jesus. However, I feel like that is ultimately flawed if you're going to write a book about his wife. Would she not also be a believer in her husband? And I'm not saying that a woman has to support or believe in everything that her husband does. I mean, I'm married and I, I'm fairly independent, but there's a certain point to marriage where like you're a team, you support each other, you believe in each other, you really do believe in each other. And yet in this book, this Anna didn't believe in Jesus being God's son. So that, that put a bad taste in my mouth. I feel that you can't believably broach this story without his own wife truly being a disciple of his. Instead, she seems to be more a disciple of this Sophia or even the Egyptian Isis. There's a lot more reference to her believing in that divinity than her, the divinity of her husband. Let's see. Oh, I also want to take this to make the point that I'm not saying that I don't believe in a goddess either. I believe that we have heavenly parents, which means a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. Um, in Christian tradition, she's not talked about very much. And, you know, I'd love to learn more about her in the Christian tradition. And I totally believe in a goddess. However, that doesn't mean that in this book, I don't like. However, that doesn't mean that I think in this book about the wife of Christ, that the wife of Christ should care more about this Sophia and Isis goddesses than belief in her own husband. And it never outright says like, I don't believe in Jesus and that he's really the son of God, but you just don't feel this support. Really, this could have been a story about any woman in that time period. I feel like Jesus was, he was kind of inconsequential to her story. It really hadn't, it had nothing to do with her being the wife of Jesus. It was more just about the woman who just so happened to be Jesus's wife in this fictional story. And with that, it was, okay, it was supposed to be a story that was about the woman who was the wife of Christ, yet she was absent for the entirety of his ministry in this book. She was absent for the miracles, the sermons, the teachings, and even the resurrection. And whatever you believe, if you are going to write a book about the woman who is the wife of Christ, and not include something as, as accepted as that in Christianity, it's cowering away from telling the story. It, it's not telling the story of the woman who is the wife of Christ. Um, it's a fault in the writing. It's cowering away from taking on the actual challenge of writing about how Christ's wife or the woman who's married to Christ may have felt during the entirety of his ministry. Instead, it sends Anna or Anna off to Egypt for the entirety of it. And she's back for a brief moment when he is crucified and then leaves before 
before the believed in resurrection. What is the point of taking on the challenge of writing this story if you're not going to actually deal with some of those meteor pieces, like the pieces with actual substance that people like myself may have been curious to read about. And then also right before she left, right before the resurrection, um, she spends time with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and it completely shies away from, from mentioning Lazarus being brought back from the dead. So it completely shies away from mentioning any of the miracles that are accounted for in the um, the Gospels, and I just feel like the I feel like the entire book was a cop out. It was a daring story to take on and try to form into this narrative. However, I think it gravely fell short of that task, and I started it with curiosity, kind of hoping to read you know, this cool account of a woman in that era who witnessed all of this amazing stuff. And I was just really disappointed. I do not suggest this book at all. It was given to me as a gift and to my friend who gave it to me. Thank you so much. She's, you're so generous and I love you. But yeah, for the book itself, I, wow, I, being that this is probably my first book review, obviously I feel strongly about it. So obviously this review of the Book of Longings can be seen as very subjective and not kind of, you know, analyzing it from an objective point of view, but that's just what it is. It is my review. And so take it as you will. I'm happy to have conversation about it if you care to counter anything I said or if you agree with anything I said, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel um, so that I know what kind of content you like seeing more of. I hope to see you around and thanks for stopping by.